just a fucking irritant for me. Uh, with this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk to the camera for a few and start a jet, have you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can fucking edit it, can't you? Yeah. That's all right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to justify what I just said then. I've got an old buddy of mine, Andy, who's not really up to date with technology, a bit like a dinosaur. <laughs> he's doing my filming today. Um, right. Every now and then, Andy, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk to you and not them. Every... Just getting away from that fucking speaker. I'm sure, in order to get a good angle, you've got to do it from there. Right, I'll tell you what. There, there we, we go. go. There we go. No, speak up, I can't hear you up there. Now, I want to introduce you all to Andy. This is Andy. He's horrible. Now, some of you out there might go, Aaron, that's no way to, to sort of describe your friend. No, no, no. no he's, he's horrible. I was lucky enough to start bodybuilding before social media, right? In fact, we could both say we were lucky enough to start bodybuilding before social media. And I know that sounds a bit hypocritical because my business is on social media, but I, I believe um, that's how I genuinely got the bug. Because when, in like the late, late 90s, uh, coming up to 2000, 2001, you had to sort of mix with the members, right? You had to mix with the guys with the big arms. You had to train with the guys with the biggest legs. You had to put yourself in that position, right? He was one of them guys. I was a 15, 15 year old kid coming into an old school backstreet gym full of fucking monsters. And uh, they, well not they, him, he used to make me just throw up. And then once I'd throw up, it would be this. Not, you can do one more, it would be, again! Again! And then kicking me. That's how it was. So this is Andy. So, uh, as I said before, he's horrible. <laughs> now, every now and then, Andy, I like to but give again, people... again, before he runs his mouth... What? That happened because you fucking did it. The more you did it, the more I pushed you. And that is why we train together. And that is character building. There was no snowflakes in the gyms back then, was there? <laughs> Every now and then, Andy, I like to show people a good arm blaster because I believe a lot of people don't know what two failure is. A lot of people don't know what actually training is about. They they actually believe that these these uh, training programs they see in magazines, three sets of ten is enough, four sets of ten is enough, and then go on to a, another exercise. It isn't enough. If you want the best results on arms, you want to build big arms and you need to be prepared to train how others are prepared to train. You need to mix other exercises up all within one set and there is a reason for that. So I'm going to do some box standard um, Olympic bar curls. What I'm going to do is I'm going to stretch the fascia. I'm really going to build that fucking muscle belly. I'm only going to do about four reps, maybe six reps, see how I feel. Then I'm going to put it down. Then I'm going to go on to the half bar. We call it the half Olympic bar. How much is that? About 15 kilos and that's 20 kilos, isn't it? Yeah. Something like that. Um, now with these ones, because it's a lighter weight, it's a short bar, I'm then going to come up again, still keeping the stretch on the bicep. I'm going to come up. But instead of coming up there where a normal contraction will end, I'm then going to do what I call rollovers. So I'm going to isolate the bicep more. So I'm going from a standard arm curl, a proper arm curl, to an isolated arm curl. So I'm going to come up and I'm going to roll my wrists overs, bring my elbows slightly forward, and that's going to contract my peak more. Then I'm going to go on to um, hammer curls. Now what's that, what's that going to do? That's going to finish my biceps off, also work my forearms a bit. Now most people think the main purpose of a hammer curl is your forearms. It's not, it's actually working your tendons more. So what you want to do, if you want a, a long future in this industry, in the bodybuilding and fitness industry, you need to, you need to keep your, your tendons up to scratch. You need to keep them capable of lifting the weights you're doing. The best way to train your tendons is always, or isolate your tendons, is always at the end of an exercise or at the end of your workout. Traction to the top. I'm going to hold the stretch at the bottom. Now remember, we're not going to maximum weight or failure. We're going for isolation. Switch on.
failure. If I was going to failure, probably be that way or a little bit more. And I'll have Andy spotting me and pushing me to failure. We're going for isolation. So this one is going to be rollover. Now take note of my wrists. Watch. Come on. Come in. And then snap your wrist. Bring your elbows forward. Bring it into your throat. Finish with hammer kills. You should do three sets of that. It doesn't really matter what you do after that. You're going to make gains. Go fucking home if you want. So do that at the beginning of your workout. You've warmed your muscles up. You've warmed your tendons up. You do that for three sets minimum. Go up to six sets, seven sets, eight sets. Doesn't really matter. Doesn't matter whether you do the whole session just on that until you're completely fucked. There is no rules to training. Huh? Look how tall I look. You ain't taller than me. Fucking well taller than me. Primo, is he taller than me? Fucking like a giant. Look at that. Look at it's like a fucking reunion giant. here. This is Primo. This is another one of my old friends. They know me already. From another video. <laughs> oh, fucking hell. Let's take over them. Fuck it. <laughs> All right. What's with the pink? I like pink. Real men even wear pink. He's not confused. He knows. Familia. 